All right, so we're going to look at an example. Um, one thing we didn't discuss in the, uh, in the introduction is, well, what do we really mean by, by magnitude? Well, magnitude just means length. It's really a distance, right? Um, and so if we, if we think about a vector, say, from a point P to a point Q, we know how to compute length. We use the distance formula, right? And, and so if, if, if V is, say, again, let's do this in three dimensions, say A, B, C, right? Well, if this came from two points, P and Q, right? You know, maybe, maybe A looks like X2 minus X1, right? B is, say, Y2 minus Y1. C is Z2 minus Z1. That's the you know, usual way you set this up. Um, the, the magnitude of, you know, so let's say this is, say, PQ, right? Uh, the notation we use, we use these double bars, right? So the magnitude of V was just the distance from P to Q, right? Um, and of course, if we start at the origin, well, then you know, the x, y, z components are the same as the, you know, just the distance from the origin to that point. We know how to do that. It's just a sum of squares under the square root, right? It's a squared plus b squared plus c squared. Um, and if we're talking about vectors in the plane, we drop the, the last component, okay? So um, we keep that in mind looking at this first example. So let's give ourselves a coordinate system. Do this over here. All right. So we draw, draw our coordinate plane. And we're going to start at the point 3, 2. So let's plot that point. We go out 1, 2, 3, up 1, 2. There's our point. Uh, what do we call it? P. Okay. And now the vector V, again, you know, we think of these numbers as, as directions, right? 2 minus 1. This is, well, add 2 to the x-coordinate. So we go over two more units, 1, 2, right? And down by 1. Okay, we get to there, right? Now, if we want, we could even put that, what is that point? Q, right? So P was 3, 2. Q is going to be 5, 1. If we go over by 2 and down by 1, we get to there. And we can draw that vector. V, right? And if you want, you know, think of the, you know, the magnitude of the vector, just the length. Well, again, you've got like a right-angled triangle here, right? Two, I mean, okay, minus one because we're going down, but really side of length one, right? And, and so we know how to find the length. It comes from the Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula, however you want to think about it. They're really the same thing, right? We take two squared. Minus one squared, don't forget that when you square that negative, you drop the minus sign. And so we just get square root of five. Okay, not so bad. Second one. Well, we could, we could you know, why don't we draw it? The question doesn't say we have to, but it doesn't hurt to draw it, I think. So we're gonna start from a point R, minus three, minus two. Okay, so we go out one, two, Three and down, one, two. So there's R. Okay, so R is minus three, minus two. S is at minus one and plus two. There's S. And so we can draw our vector, W this time. Okay. All right, so there's the vector. The component form, well, what is the component form? The component form, again, so this was minus 1, 2. We just take the difference in the coordinates. So W is going to look like this. W is going to be. So we take the coordinates for the final point, and we subtract the coordinates for the initial point. Again, um, being careful of signs. Okay, so we get minus one plus three is two, 
minus two minus minus two, so two plus two, or two plus two, sorry, two minus minus two, we get four, two and four. And again, all that's really telling us is that to get from the point R to the point S, right, we have to go over by two units and up by four. And again, if we wanted to get the magnitude, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to get the magnitude of that vector. All right, last one. Now the last one is in three dimensions. And my one piece of advice about sketching vectors in three dimensions is, well, okay, my advice about sketching th vectors in three dimensions is don't. <laughs> it's, it never go, it, you never get something that looks nice, especially if you were trying to be faithful to the values that are given to you. Uh, it always ends up looking bad, but let's try it anyway. Okay, so first let's plot that point, Q. So we go out one unit, we go over one unit, we go up one unit. All right, so one, one, and then one gets us to the point Q, coordinates one, one, one. Okay, and now for the vector, right, two minus one and three, again, that's telling us sort of where we should go from that point. So it's saying we should kind of go out one, two units, so two, and then over one going this way, one unit to the left, and then three units up. So one, two, three, All right? So we get to there. And then our vector connects the dots. Well, it's not that bad, I guess. I mean, we can kind of maybe do those as dashed lines so they're not cluttering things up so much. But here, I'll dash it. OK. All right. So that gives you the idea. Now, in most cases, I think you, you, know, you just draw these sort of representative diagrams. You plot two points. You draw a vector between them. You maybe don't even necessarily bother sort of labeling the coordinate axes because the it sort of trying to be accurate will sometimes just make things messier than they need to be. Um, now, as far as magnitude, well, we have already the component form for the vector. So we just have to plug the values in to the magnitude formula. So 2 squared minus 1 squared plus 3 squared, right? So we get uh, 4 plus 1 plus 9. So we get square root of 14 for the magnitude of the vector, which again is just the distance from the tail to the tip.